Hello everyone and welcome to an extremely special edition of Mindset Master Moments with yours truly, Dr. Lisa. And I am super excited because we have another special first for Mindset Master Moments. You see this dazzling beautiful lady next to me. She is officially our first guest on the podcast, live, in person, in studio, and we worked to make sure <laughs> we could do this. Oh, I have an amazing, outstanding rock star of a woman who I get to call my sister. Yeah, amen to that. Well, you've heard our intro prior to this, but I want to remind our actual video podcast watchers that she is an international motivational speaker, trainer, and coach. And like I said, she is a mom, she's a wife, she is a leading lady of what I give, love, light, peace, joy, abundance, and so many wonderful things. I want you to go in the description to get the details because guess what? I told you she was my sister and I can't wait to <laughs> dig into the conversation. This is gonna be a great one. Yes, it hey, is. Hey, yes, Hello. Wow, just wow. Thank you for having me. And it has been a long time coming. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be number one on the first time ever. Number one in the studio. So, yes, it is a pleasure. It is an honor to be here and sitting next to the one and only Dr. White, which we just love her, as you know. So, thank you for having me. It is a blessing. It is a blessing. You are a blessing. I'll tell you what, I met this lovely lady we met about three years ago. We literally, like, someone introduced us and we got on Zoom. Instant. Zoom. Instant. And her name, by the way, because we forgot, because I, her, her name doesn't matter when she's my sister, right? Her sister's name is, good. I'll Deb be all your sisters. Her name is Deborah Hall, the one and only. And Deb, you are fantastic. I am part of your life, you're part of mine. Mm. But I get to watch you as a professional the journey impact lives all over the world in your state and states across the United States as well. You're on the flight, you're on a flight almost with me, in my opinion, <laughs> just getting leaders and educators and even students aligned for their assignment. You have this book that you're working on and sneak peek first to be ever heard here on my Master Moments coming. <laughs> This fall, she's working on a book and she's one of our signature messages, why you can. And so I want you all to lean in, whether you're watching us or you're listening to us on uh, Spotify or uh, Apple, it doesn't matter, YouTube, lean in because it's we're gonna go deep enough and bring you back up. But she's writing a book called Why You Can. It's her signature keynote, Deb. And all the success that you have multiple international awards as a leading woman in our century. You have your own business where you, you, you earn over six figures, led and you're able to work with your family, you have your son, which is impressive, and your husband, which you on that team. Um, she's very smart, she knows not to go it alone, but she will if she has to. <laughs> but you, you're massively successful, but most important that radiates in, with me is impactful. But you did not just grow up with us, we say, a gold spoon in your mouth. No, ma'am. And no, so tell us how are you and why have you so that we can learn why we can because your story is one of massive resilience and growth that you continue to put in. Yeah, and that's one of those things like, where do you start? <laughs> where do you start? Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a journey, and it's still a journey, right? It is it's, always. As you know, mindset mastery, that's why we're here, because Girl, it's a constant growth mindset, journey. Yes. Constant journey. And so for me, um, yeah, it's been quite a journey. And I always go back to, I can remember when I was 10 years old. I remember when I was 10 years old and I would be lying in my bed at night and my bed consisted to be in the attic and we had some sheets that gave some boundaries, some bureaus that gave me some space to my own space and, and I would lie there at night and I would have my alarm clock radio, dating myself perhaps, <laughs> under my pillow and, and then I would, I would be listening to music and then having my hand over my ear. Um, just drowning out the fighting and the arguing and the noise 
things that was going on downstairs. Um, and I would lie there at night and, and it's that dream that's within all of us, right? But in that childlike faith when you're 10 years old and I would just lie there and I would just know, I'm, I'm gonna be somebody someday. I'm gonna do something that matters. I'm not gonna live this life. The arguing, it was just from the drinking and all that. And so I just can remember lying there going, I'm going to be better than all of this. Mm. And there's that mindset, right? And that childlike faith that goes with that. And where does that come from? But then life happens. God, life happens. Mm. And I've been fortunate enough to have enough people in my life continue to have that battle cry of, you know, life doesn't happen to you. Life can happen mm. for you. For you. That's a mindset. Right? And so, Ooh. yeah, right? And, um, you know, because of that, before that, it was, you know, I'm one of nine that graduated from high school. I'm one of nine graduated from college. Um, statistics were against me. Ooh. I was an orphan at seven. Um, and then I was raised as um, in an alcoholic home. I was a runaway. Um, so this is just the statistics <laughs> stacked, stacked um, of why I shouldn't, why you shouldn't, why I shouldn't um, be anything but a bomb. Be anything. And, and, I, and I've lost a lot. Mm. I not only was an orphan at a young age, but um, I've also lost five siblings. Mm. And we can save that for the book. Right. Um, which gives us um, the mindset of with all of that, you know, it's the, the failure success, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of why me, why, why not me? Why not why me? Not me? Ooh. But I didn't do it wrong. So there's a lot there. You'll have to get the book because there's a lot yes. to unpack there Don't to pack. get you. It, it didn't just like, oh, this is going to be a perfect day. No. no. You no. had to push through. And that's why um, we talk so much about the resilience mindset inside and also we train. And we work together in our Mindset Mastery mm -hmm. 360 program where leaders will be trained on this. Because resilience mindset is actually... I think the two most paramount mindset you can have is one of resilience and growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Then you can add entrepreneur mindset. Then you can add millionaire mindset. Right. All these other things come. Step by step. But the foundation is really resilience. And I'm sure our viewers, Deb, have somewhere in your brief share, we can hear and connect to someone who has overcome a lot. And so someone listening to us is definitely mm -hmm. hearing what you said. Why shouldn't I? And why reason, not you? Why not you? And that is a mindset. If you just sit for a moment and take that in as she said it, why not me? I want you to ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. So all that, how did you know what you were going to be and when did you decide <laughs> that you were going to be an international speaker, an international leader, a woman of not just affluence but also influence, a woman that touched lives every day of your life and your journey. How did you pivot from having a resilience mindset of why shouldn't I? And yes, I can, because you had to say yes. What made you say yes? And what took you on the journey to where you are today as we know you to be Deborah Hall? There's a lot of questions right there, too. <laughs> Dr. White knows a lot of it. She does, she does. We might have to have a couple of podcasts. And, um, yes. Um, and so, and that's a great question because, again, it's a daily process, right? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we all suffer from worthiness and all the things that we have all gone through. And we all have our own story, right? And so, a lot of that is, do we allow our wounds mm -hmm. to become our identity? Yes. Do we allow the wounds wow. to become the identity? Because it's hard to do the right thing when you feel the wrong way, mm. right? So if you're feeling the wrong way, then your decision making, your mindset, the things that you're looking to do, to be, do, and have, because we all have things that we want to be, do, and have. And so it's a daily, it's a daily walk. It's a daily constant yes. battle, right? Of, exactly. of, and so it's funny that you asked that question because I go back to, um, you know, I was the girl that would take out my curling iron and I would force my siblings to sit on the couch and <laughs> watch me perform because whenever I was like, I'm going to be something someday. Right? I'm going to be on stage. I'm going to do something. And that was the dream way back when. And so I was like Reese Lightning and a little bit. But interestingly, and it got me to the next step, but I, my whole thing was like, I want to be a lawyer. Mm. 
because I want to lock mean people up. <laughs> It's funny, I wanted Purpose. to be a judge too. So we were gonna we're gonna be legal sisters. And if you're really mean solitary confinement. Solitary confinement for life. Um, and people. so right, I mean that but in that moment, that dream, right, that purpose in that moment uh, got me to the next step, the next chapter, right? Yes. And so that's where I really thought that I did want to be a lawyer. I worked in law firms in Boston and, ah. and I did all of that, you know, again after conquering of, you know one of nine that ended up, you know, getting out and that was in that again. And so I know I was righteous, you all. I was not always nice, right? Because the battle was the battle real. Was, the battle scars. The battle was real, yes. right? I, I was a runaway, I was living in other people's back porches. I'm um, just trying to get out to be better. Yeah. And that was always the initial thing, better. And then I became righteous and wanted to be a lawyer. And then, <laughs> and I worked in law firms and I met some wonderful people. And that sphere of influence just got me to the next chapter. To the next chapter. To oh. the next chapter, to the next chapter, to the next chapter of Ooh. the next best version of Deb. Right. Which wasn't always a good version. No, good but, version, but it was the best it's coming from all that. I had a guest on, um, Mr. Keen Shannon, Top 50 CEO, he said a couple, his, his thing was on our episode was, I only needed to see the next step. And it's a quote that I have out there on social media, that as long as you can see just where you can put your next, mm -hmm. I, and I didn't see you there's two steps, right? I said your next step, because sometimes you have a, a big picture, you want to be a lawyer, but you don't have a clue how you can get there. You just know you have this this thing. You, basically, you're being called to do something greater. I heard many people here are one. They have a to be coaching. I heard the synchronicity being the workforce strategist of the reason why you were saying lawyer was because number one, you're going to help people mm -hmm. and you're going to help transform people's lives. But, you know, and protect I didn't individuals. Want, right? I didn't want people to be raised the way that I was raised. There you go, and you wanted to stop it. You wanted I to didn't do want something. To be that statistic. Right, you wanted to pass it on that others will become a statistics. And that's the baseline. A lot of us in our career path, when it comes to saying yes to purpose, we get tied up in the nuances of the titles and what we should study in college. And so I tell mm -hmm. individuals all the time that purpose is the theme. Yes. The why, your big why to right. your life. And many times it's so attached to the journey you would have come through. So when we fast forward today, you did not become a lawyer. No, I didn't. You didn't become a lawyer, but you became an advocate. <laughs> <laughs> you became an advocate and someone who, in my opinion, no matter what, we're all doing work in helping people transform their mindsets. You're literally helping people transform their mindsets mm -hmm. in their position as leaders and also young lives mm -hmm. in, in the schools, young people to switch their mindsets, is my opinion. I will see him jet somewhere. When you decided that, what was that moment like to you? When you said yes to that chapter of your purpose after working in law and doing all those things. And so, again, it goes back to um, God had a calling on my life. I'm a woman of faith. Um, and when I look back at all of those things, um, yeah, was it hard? Yeah, life's mm -hmm. hard. Yes. Life is hard. Yes. Um, but when I when I look back to all those things, little by little by little, and there was a book that I read one time um, called Dream Seeds by Mike Murdoch. Mm -hmm. And that just planted a seed in me for many different things. Mm -hmm. And so that process, that journey of, yeah, okay, I'm not aware. Um, <laughs> But then that got me to, uh, you know, got me in the business, right? Right. And then people come in and out of their lives. I'm also into fitness, and so I had uh, a colleague in the fitness industry that was looking for to bring somebody on to say, hey, we need somebody to grow this company. And I thought, okay, sure, I'll do that. So I was always open. If that's one thing, y'all, is like just be open-minded. Open-minded. Just be open-minded. That's that growth mindset that we mm -hmm. talked about so much on yeah. the podcast. Being open-minded is literally being open to let life and people understand why they can't people and even circumstances teach you. Yeah. Because it's life is a classroom. Yeah. I remember Oprah Winfrey saying that some years ago, life is a classroom. And so here's the part that I find in you. She says when you learn, you teach. Yeah. And so I like to call myself a teacher and a facilitator. Yeah. Love all the time. Yes. They're wonderful badges of honor. But you're facilitating, yes. helping people grow. Yeah. 
and that's my biggest. Yes, I speak and I love to speak, but I love to speak with a purpose. And mm. so, um, because of the programming, right, the follow-up programming. And so, in answer to your question, like that one thing leads you to the next, right? The next chapter, mm. the next chapter. And so, how often do one one goes to get an education in a certain industry, and then you know five careers later, right? Five careers later. And so, uh, I'm just fortunate that along the way, I, I was always open-minded to what's the next best version mm -hmm. what's what next and and to also because I'm a woman of faith just be open-minded to what God has placed for right. me and, he's leading you and to. all of the things that I have gone through um, in my childhood is what has equipped me mm -hmm. to become the to, to help those who Deb once was who Deb once was I hope you guys caught that because we're telling you that your past and all the reasons why you shouldn't are the exact reasons why you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys want to tap in for when she drops why the Why I can. She'll be back to tell <laughs> us about it. And that's the reason why you do. So no matter what our viewers and listeners are going through today, there's purpose in the pain. Yes. If you choose to. But you must choose. You have to choose. I always say, Hardship can make you bitter or better. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. It's a choice. So you took everything that you went through and wanted to ensure you attached the partner. And I hope everyone's listening because I did mention she has her own business, woman led, over seven figures. She's doing her thing. And again, she's still such a humble servant. But I want you to hear the success. But pay attention to the journey and I would say the mindset, because mindset is the key mm -hmm. to your success. It so is, you all, it so is. We're gonna dig deeper into Deb's journey of exactly why you can after a moment from our sponsors. We are back, we're in the studio with the phenomenal, most gorgeous, my sister friend, Deb Halt. Deb, we've all, you've, all, you've already taken us on such a fantastic mindset shift. Well, it's it. easy when you're sitting with her. I mean, <laughs> number one mindset disruptor. <laughs> right. And Deb, it's pretty easy. So she, She's you know, disruptive. Why can we, right? We chose, we chose. We, mm -hmm. we, we ended last segment talking about choosing mm -hmm. to grow mm -hmm. from the pain, choosing to find the purpose in mm -hmm. the pain. When you made a choice, what is it that you truly help people do now with everything that you've come through and everything you've grown through? What do you help people do? Now? Oh, and I love what I do. I love, love, love what <laughs> oh, I do. do. I'm so blessed, so blessed. Uh, and it's been a journey, right, yes. along the way is to kind of figure that out. And that's why I love, I love to keep failure and success together. Right? Don't separate the two. Medicine. Keep them together. Yes, it it, it keeps us humble. It allows us to be coachable. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, um, so what I get to do now and how it's, I, I have a huge passion for youth. Mm. Um, and not young, young youth, but middle school, high school, college levels. I have a huge passion for um, and just transforming their mindset as to why they can, not why they can't. Exactly. Because if I were to throw some truth serum, on y'all, right? Mm -hmm. How many of us are guilty as charged that mm -hmm. we spend more time thinking about what we don't have, what yes. we can't do, what we're not good at? Why do I have a double chin or a And when punch? you focus, <laughs> when you focus on all of that, yes. right? Um, again, it goes back to hard to do the right thing when you feel the wrong way because mm -hmm. that creates a mindset if you're yes. thinking about can't do, don't have, not good at mm -hmm. versus what you can do, what you do have, and what you are good at. And some days that's hard to find, Sounds right? Good. Some days, and especially when you growing up in the environment that I grew up in, it was hard to find those moments, mm -hmm. right? And that's where other people come in and out of your lives all the time. But when we, you know, and they say, right, uh, uh, the average, um, you respond to about 42% of your day is based on habit average Ooh, so if your that. habit right is right. can't do don't have not good at that's what guess what your habit is get. and guess what you can't give away what you don't have oh come on and so if you're focused on can't do don't have not good at guess what i'm putting on you i'm going to focus on what you can't do what you're not good at what you don't have versus owning who i am what i do have what i can do what i'm good at because then that increases my self-worth yes and if my self-worth is healthy right then i'm gonna put that habit on you yes and i'm gonna see for you for what you can do what you do have and not well mm. how did she get there right like what 
why, why are you, not, not me? me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so then, again, it, because you can't give away what you don't have. Exactly. And you're going to behave in such a way, and you're going to focus on other people. And so that's the biggest thing, that the transformation that I love, is to have students slow down. Yes. What's right with you? What's right with you? What's right with, what's you? Right with you? What's right with you? Mm. Not what's wrong with you, because we all have flaws. Yes. Right? And here's the thing. When we start focusing on what's right with us, we keep trying in our society today, especially students scrolling through the social mm. media. We're all guilty. Yes. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Always trying to be the next best version of somebody else. Of someone else. Ooh, that's a mic drop. Why not become the next best version of, of you? you. Mm. And you. Mm. And you. And <laughs> you can't do that if you're focusing on what you don't have, can't do, not oh, good at. Oh, that is so powerful. So it's focus on what you can do, what you do have, and what you are good at. What's right with you? Right. So that you're not losing your wounds. Your identity does not become your the wounds. Wounds. That I sabotage that us. Here. That sabotage us, right? Yeah. And and then that then where's the growth in that? Where is the growth in that? Where's the growth in that? So we're just gonna coin it here on mindset master moments, the why I can mindset. I mean, no one's done it yet, so that's yours. The why, why I can, can mindset. Because you have a whole principle that you've created mm -hmm. around it, and you just shared it with us. Mm -hmm. And so, Deb, here's one thing, because we listened to your journey, and it came up for me, and I thought, someone's going to get curious, because viewers and listeners, the regulars, have heard my stories, and they're here, parts of yours. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't, I think I'm great, I think I'm phenomenal. I'm a great speaker. I'm a great teacher. I'm a great lawyer. I'm a great doctor. I'm the best surgeon in the world. But those people that hurt me, I can't wait for them to get what they deserve. As a matter of fact, I'll see to it. Or I'm watching to see when, you know, something will hit them. I want to ask you when it comes to your journey and when you hear about a child running away, mm -hmm. when you hear about a child having to live on someone's porch, was there a time for you when unforgiveness was a part of your being? And how did you how did you deal with that throughout your life? Because I think um, forgiveness is a journey. It's not oh, just one and done. Yes. So tell it, us about that. Because I believe someone might be stuck. They might believe they can, and they might be doing and not seeing the results. And one thing I learned, Deb, is unforgiveness can really stop you. Mm -hmm. It can stop you physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually. It has, I have, it's been my experience and millions of others. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with the letting go of abandonment and you not being protected in all the things as a child? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's, you know, hurt people hurt people, right? We've heard that over and over again. Hurt people hurt people. And so how, and so how do you forgive? And the first step is you have to forgive yourself. Mm. Forgive yourself, and again, it goes that whole comparison. Like when you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you're never going to be able to forgive yourself mm -hmm. because you're always in comparison mode, yes. right? So it goes back to that self-worth and all of that. And and it's it's and again, it's hard to do the right thing when you feel the wrong way and when you're angry. Mm. Hey, I remember I could still bring you to the stump that I sat on when I was mm. uh, 14 years old. It was after my brother was killed, and mm. I could. Bring you to that stump where I sat and I had the body language and everything and I was like, I will never love anybody ever again Ooh. and I'm done. Wow. Oof. Felt that. And that was a moment. That was a moment. Life is full of moments. Yes. And that we are not, we are human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right? Yeah, so we, we are going to be angry. We're going to get frustrated. We're and going we to should get feel angry. it. But we can't stay there. Keyword. Can't stay there. Keyword. Can't right. stay there. And so just get up one more time. <laughs> Just get up one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so much depth in that. One more time. Just one Not ten more, more time. Just one. One more. You don't. You don't have to think about. Just one. Am more. I gonna have to do this again? No, you're just doing it one more time. Just Every one time. time. Just one more time. So you're saying, when it came to forgiveness and letting go of the pain, it was I'm stuck. I'm feeling it, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. Just don't stay there. That's what she said. Right. And I, I concur with that because a lot of people wonder if I'm always happy and dancing. Sometimes I post a video <laughs> and someone says, 
hey, you look, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, why? What's going on? Well, you posted a video and I'm like, no, I'm in business mode. I'm trying to get that yes, video and yes, that message yes. out and I'm moving. Oh. Don't misread me. <laughs> Don't, but, but it's, yes. I understand because people think, but because I'm human too. I have sadness. I have grief. I have hurt. I have pain. I felt abandoned. All of the things. Yes. But even when that creeps up, mm-hmm. I let myself feel it. And then I remind myself why I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you but have one to let yourself feel it. Again. We're, we're built on emotions, right? Yes. We are human beings that are built on emotions. Yes. And so when you start stuffing that all in, you wonder why we have issues because we never deal with it. Exactly. Right? And so, you know, one of my ways, I teach boxing classes. <laughs> Listen, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Talk about resilience. So you're looking at a fabulously gorgeous young woman that kicked my butt in the gym a few days ago. <laughs> And we I'm did. proud of it. We did. I'm proud of she it. She was impressive. Because I now was... I have something not to compete with her, but I have someone in my life that I can say I have another level to, and she pulls me forward. And I hope that my sisters and friends and even guy friends and all y'all watching and listening have someone in your life that you all can learn and grow from and with. Well, and be accountable to each other. Yes. Right? And yes. become the next best version of uh, myself you. today. Exactly. So when she was in the gym, she and I were working out for the first time and her moves. And so, it, again, you listen to her journey and you see the resilience. But she kept putting one foot in front of the other, mm-hmm. is what she's telling us. So tell us why, because what's the secret to all this gorgeousness? <laughs> and we're not, don't ask her age, that's rude. Okay? <laughs> You won't guess. Good luck. <laughs> but tell us why is it important? If we we learn how we learned that how we can have that why you can't mindset. We've learned about forgiveness mm-hmm. and how we just need to put one foot in step. Mm-hmm. When it comes to maintaining all that you have become, mm-hmm. what is your secret? I don't think there is a. It's no secret. <laughs> there's You're, no secret. You know secret. You've got to put the work in. You've there's, got to. There's no secret. Ooh, love you it. You can't like it's not. not it's not going to come to you, mm, right? Come and on. And so, do I have days where I don't want to go to the gym? Yes. Do I have days where I'm up on the road, yes. out the door, three thirty, four in the morning, and then I go train all day, and then I'm making dinner, and then I'm like, I can do this at six thirty. I can go take my Pilates class. I can do it. I can. And that goes back to I can. Yes. Why I can is because I'm. Working it. I am worth, I'm worth Ooh, gosh. being taken care of. Yes. Right? God has provided me the opportunity to make a difference, make an impact, and has a calling on my life. Right. And if I don't take care of me first, then I what can't help other from? people. Right? Exactly. Water hydration is a lifestyle, first of all. So water hydration. hydration. Okay. And we've got stacks of like three bottles there that we're gonna we're drinking on our way getting ready for this recording. But you have to move, and you just have to move. You You have have to to move. move. The key she said here is, I'm worth it. And that she has these responsibilities. But her first responsibility is what we talk about a lot of on Mindset Master Moments, is Mm self-responsibility. And I hope that- Can't give away what you don't have. Can't, exactly. You can't give away what you don't have. And you know, you can't pour, if you don't have it, like it's on empty. Mm -hmm. So what it's, your wife, your mother, you know, mm-hmm. you you have all these wonderful roles and you lead all over. You've got Mindset Mastery 360 leadership on your belt, like all the other things you do in your church and your community. Understand, I hope you're catching it. If you're still on your journey to success or you've already attained a certain level of success, but you're feeling weary and tired, mm-hmm. are you pouring into yourself? Deb is saying to us today that you have to make sure you're pouring from a filled cup. And I hope you caught that awesomeness because that gives you the energy right that yes. gives you the energy yes. that gives you and i'm a huge fan of relational leadership okay there's where we're going to go next you know yes. so again the relationships that you build are going to have a direct reflection on how you live your life that is another cup mm-hmm. that you have to keep full mm-hmm. so now tell us a little bit about that because that is one thing that leadership is a passion of ours mm-hmm. we yes. share that we actually met in, in, in a leadership mm-hmm. arena. And so when we talk about relational leadership, what is the key element? Why is it important? Because I think people hear the term leadership and they think about what's your title? Are you a CEO? Are you the, right. you know, like right. the, you know, all the things we get to do and be called around the world. That's not Mm-mm. the key essence mm-hmm. of lead. 
leadership. Right. Well, and you and I both teach, right? You don't need positions or titles. We don't need seniority or status in order to yes. lead, right? Yes. And if you have that, we're not taking that away from you. No. Right? And that's, you've that's, earned that. That's it, it's, it's, yeah. it's part of who you are, but it's not what you are. Right. right? And so, um, why I love and we love relational leadership is because really it's quite simple. Mm, people us. go along with people they get along with and that they like. Ooh, let's keep it simple. Let's not complicate. Let's life. not complicate. <laughs> let's not complicate. That's why we just love each other. <laughs> right? it's, it's people something. go along with people that, and we all give out a vibe. We all give out energy. Mm -hmm. Right? That vibe, that energy is how we think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's that fine line of confidence and then cockiness. Mm, come on. Right? There's that and it's fine crossed line. Over quickly. Right? Because when we're cocky and we're like, we know it all, what do we call somebody who thinks they know it all? Cocky. A know it all. A know it all. <laughs> and they're cocky. Right? And so, and you can't, you, especially working with students, you can't kid kids. Like, they know. They know. They know. Yes. Right? It's the intuition and, and people just know. And I'm not, you know, but that usually becomes where focused on our flaws. Mm, we're focused on our flaws, flaws, right? That's why we're cocky. That's why we're going to overcompensate or undercompensate. Come on. And then when we are focused on who we are, what we can that's that quiet confidence. And then we become humble. Yes. And when we're humble, we become coachable and teachable. Come on. And, and then the growth happens, the growth happens yes. right? Because we're both obviously personal growth, right? Yes. But as far as relational leadership goes is that um, when we build meaningful and intentional relationships, mm. That's going to determine our leadership effectiveness. That's right. That's but so right. what do relationships have to do with leadership? Everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's like, you know, being a leader and a lot of people wonder why I spend so much time, whether as an instructor, professor, trainer, why I spend so much time with individuals that I'm responsible for one on one. Like every time I got new, <laughs> thank you. Every time I, I got a new staff or a new student in my class, or when I have a new client in my case, it's that they'll be surprised. We don't talk about why they are there, why the services I might offer provide. Mm -hmm. It's who are you? Where have you been? Yeah. What have you done? What are you looking forward to? What do you like? And where are you going? And where are you going? And then, as the leader in the situation, I can say, well, how can I help you? Yeah. And I ask that because I only have an array of services that I can provide, sure. but I ask because when they determine what they want mm -hmm. from me, that's what I provide. I don't provide them a whole lot more. You know, right. we talk about pouring water on the horse's back, yeah. relational leadership in my sense, but everything that you de define in my world is how can I serve you? Mm -hmm. And so as sisters, mm -hmm. this is what we, this is the text message. We literally say, <laughs> We talk about what we're going through. So like, how can I support you? Mm -hmm. How can I serve you? Like, what can I do for you? What today? can I do for you today? And it's up to me to say, um, just you being here is enough. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you're thinking of me, mm -hmm. praying for me is enough. And also, just oh, I just need you to bring me a bottle of water. Yeah. What, whatever. And so I love that you focus specifically on relational leadership because people don't understand. John Maxwell talks about first leading yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is where I sit on why I do personal and professional growth. Because I can teach you leadership principles, I can teach you strategies and everything to run your business, but who you are, there's a leader mm -hmm. inside of the ship. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we, as women, we do the lead and we put H-E are yeah. and wonderful cute stuff. Of cute stuff. So let's stay let's, with the basic. Yeah, keep it let's, simple. let's keep it simple. There is a leader inside of a ship and then they bring passengers on that ship. And so the relationships that you're going to reform, that you're going to form with individuals mm -hmm. according to what you told us, mm -hmm. your very eloquent definition is who you are and how you show up is how the results you're going to get with the people in your life because mm -hmm. they marry you. Right. Right. They're not marrying themselves, they're marrying you and the experiences that you're having with yourself. So when you work with individuals, what would you say as relational lead, in the relational leadership realm and working with leaders and even working with your students, what do you find is the biggest mindset block or limiting beliefs that individuals are suffering with when it comes to moving into that relational space? Worthiness. Oh. That's no surprise. Worthiness. We just did a women's conference, right? For yep. all women. And 
you know, again, very successful women, it's all part of it, but if we're gonna be honest and roll our sleeves up, we all sit down and go, okay, I got this, right? And, and, and it's mm. like, it all goes back to what are you telling yourself? But we mm. suffer every day. Yes. We just do. So don't think you're alone because mm -hmm. it's just, just take one more step. One more right? step. But mm. I think we all suffer from, am I worthy? Am I worthy? Am I worthy? That is so of deep. the next best version of me. Ooh. And if you have a past where it's been a, a lot, it, it's coming with you. It's coming. Coming with you. It goes to work. It's part of your story, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure we don't live there. We don't live there. And our biggest, you know, I think one of our biggest challenges, especially as an entrepreneur, as somebody who wants to make a difference, want to change the world tomorrow, uh, is that we still battle thinking bigger. Mm. And we're going to end up putting a lid somehow, Ooh. some way. Ooh, lids. And so none of us are thinking as big as we should have. None of us are thinking as big as we should be, or as we should be, I should say. I'm sorry about Talking about what, I'm still stuck on what you drop because in my journey as a coach, as an instructor, as a professor, what all that I do when I'm working with someone, when I'm working, it's always common mm -hmm. And even in my own journey, when I got stuck on launching, on being, on doing, it's always me being afraid that I am not. Here's the sneaky words that I hear for that word. Because a lot of us don't want to admit that it's wordiness we're struggling with. Mm -hmm. We're like, well, I'm not ready. <laughs> I have to do this. And I, I got to put this together first. <laughs> yes. What are some okay, then when ones? you do, what else? Exactly. <laughs> what else do we, what else is common? Um, well, I haven't gone, I haven't lost, I need to lose 10 pounds. Oh, so I teach fitness, right? Right. Well, well, I need to get in shape before I come to your class. <laughs> Seriously? No. You need to walk in the door. One step. One step. You need to get in your car and drive to the gym. Next and step, so get out of the car. Behind a lot of the limiting beliefs that we have are the thoughts of worthiness. Mm -hmm. And so I hope you guys are catching this because this is so powerful. I'm going to listen to this again. How do you help individuals overcome that? The worthiness. Am I worthy? And how do you get them to see that? If if you had to tell our viewers how they can mm. walk through connecting with their mm. worth and what makes them worthy, because this is why they came, right? It's gonna go right back to what's right with you. Mm. What's right with you is why you came. Mm. And if you see, here's the thing, and we've heard this before too: is authenticity has no competition. <laughs> no, and that's why I love my life. And so, if you focus on what's right with you, right. I can't compete with that. It's yours, you own it. That's there's right. there's just no competition yes. because if you're authentic about it. You can copy my the lipstick, challenge. my hairstyle, my dress code, you can't copy me. Right. <laughs> and if you're gonna again becoming the next best version of yourself of yourself. Not Deb. Yourself. Work is right. And so again, what's right with you? What's right with what's you? Right with you. And she you start so that. simple. Right. <laughs> And, and see, and here's the thing, most people can't come up with, like when I do that in a workshop, most people, when I say, and when you have 15, you know, go ahead and put your pen down, everybody goes, what? 15? Did we're you say one five? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't find 15 things, what's right And we me? overthink that, right? Ooh. And it can be a combination. It could be a combination, it could be physical. I mean, I, mom yes. gave me, I got some good hair, yes. right? Right. Uh, and, and so, but you know, and so it could be some physical traits, but it's also personal, you know, as far as your character. Character, right? right? We focus like, more. Oh my God! What's your superpower, right? right. What is your superpower? What is it right. that is the authentic version of you? And for me, it's positivity. Like positivity. I, that's just my that's my wheelhouse, yes. right? And my top value is is loyalty, right? That's death. Exactly. Right. That might not be you, you and that's but, okay. Right. And there's some similar things. But know them. But know them. What's right? Write right. them down. You and write them down. Eliminate so, them. We're going to be go to instruction right away. Everyone who's listening to this podcast, when you're done listening to us, get a sheet of paper and I want you to just only write what's right with you. I bet you I've got five. At least five. And I say, don't, don't just do, do away with it. I would say, don't even put it on this paper. Put it in a notepad. Write on your notepad on your phone and keep adding to the list. Mm -hmm. Because if you look for it, that's what you will find. Yes. 
and that will become the essence, as Deb told us earlier, of who you are. That will become a habit for you. And so you won't be like, oh my gosh, I got a poop in. You know, <laughs> oh my gosh, my hair's, you know, my hair's thinning. I'm becoming, you know, 35 and my hair is thinning, or I need to work out. We're not telling you not to know what you need to be working mm -hmm. on. And notice, I didn't say what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. I said what you want to be working on. Mm -hmm. But if what you focus, remember, we don't get what we want. Let's talk about the law of attraction just a bit here. Mm -hmm. We don't get what we want in life. A lot of people post on social media, I get what I, I always get what I want. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You get what you are. Mm -hmm. You get what you are. And so if you're focused on what's right with you and you strengthen that and you look at what you're supposed to be working on and you work on that, then this will be high focus and that's what you are and that's what your vibration will be mm -hmm. and that's energy. what you attract. And that's what you attract because we're all energy. When she beings. talks about being a positive person and loyalty is we have that in common. <laughs> See, we get along there. It's easy for us to easy. just look yep. or read and connect. But if that's not you, like she said, it's okay. You're saying that basically is the law of resonance. A lot of times we talk about the law of attraction, but it's, you're really talking about the law of resonance. Mm -hmm. And so no matter, she said that, that crazy stuff happens, life happens. Mm -hmm. But with that level of positivity and understanding of your worth, mm -hmm. you keep attracting the good. Right? And consistency compounds, right? Ooh! Both good and not. So. Yes! So either way, it's gonna compound. Compounds. So what you focus on grows. Oh my gosh, we mm -hmm. will be right back after a <laughs> word from our sponsors. This is good. We're back live in the studio with my dear sister and friend, phenomenal so leader, fun. So fun. <laughs> Deborah <laughs> Hall. We are on to our final segment for this episode, but definitely not last. You'll see a lot more of Deb. Um, Deb, anyway. Yes. One of our fun things you we like to ask of our guest is. What is success for you? So how do you define success for yourself? Um, getting out of bed sometimes. <laughs> I love it. I never know what you all are going to say. <laughs> getting out of bed today? Oh, you know, um, I, I think for me, you know, that's such a broad question. What is success? Mm -hmm. And so I don't even know if I have an answer for like what is success, mm -hmm. um, but I do know what it is to be significant. Ooh, she, she just changed the game on me. Uh, where's the microphone? Let's drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Because success is so many different things. You know, for today, the like success is that I do what I'm supposed to do, right? Right. How do you build self-worth? How do you build self-confidence? And so for me, success is being a person of your word so that you do what you say you're going to do mm. is what is going to end up giving you your confidence and your self-worth. Mm. If you say you're going to get up at seven o'clock in the morning, keep your, word. keep your word and get up at seven. Because when you do that, and then the next day, you're going to go to the gym and you're just gonna do 10 minutes. Mm. Uh, you're gonna sit down and you're gonna write in your journal mm -hmm. you know, for five minutes every day. When you do that, you're following through, you becoming the person you said that you were going to be. You are, you are being a person of your word, mm. and then you have evidence yes. that supports that you do record. what you say you're going Woo! to do, and then that builds your work. Oh my so, God. and to me, that's significant. That's success to me, yes. right? Yes. It's not about, yeah, hey, do we all want to have a nice home? Yes. Yeah. Do we want to have mm -hmm. a nice car? Do we yeah. want to look good? Yes, right? That's, right. All, that's all success. But then there's significance. The next, the next level, because once you have that success, you know, I mean, I have a great family. I'm blessed. I've been married for 30 years. Yes. Um, I have a son who just got engaged. I have a, my other son is working and running our company with us. Yes. And that's all success, right? Yes. You know, with that, there's challenges and all those kinds yes. of things. But then there's significance. Mm. Significance. So, we the seek, impact? so we're seeking significance. Mm. And I love to say we are people of significance. Um, I think I said that to our mindset mastery, the mm -hmm. global movement. Because significance creates impact and influence that creates positive change wherever you go. Like, whether you're sleeping, you're awake, 
that's what Mindset Mastery 360 is about. Be the boss, right? right? And the, what is the impact? What is the impact? So I love that. So success for you is being a person of significance that number one, trust and honors and is confident in yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to become that person that continues to create, create impact. Right. Oh, there we go. There it is. And it's, it's beautiful. Somebody might feel like that resonates with you and you can own it for yourself as well. That's why our guest here. The next thing I'm gonna ask you, Deb, is in your journey, when it comes to mindset, mm -hmm. what is one pivotal moment that if you did not make a mindset shift, you would not be who you are today? I didn't say where, I said who. Mm -hmm. Significance, right? <laughs> <sighs> one pivotal moment of my shifting when I accepted the fact that God had a calling on my life. Mm -hmm. that look like? Well, it started right when I knew I, when I was 10, but I didn't know it. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we take the next step and I want to be a lawyer. But that just got me on that journey. That is phenomenal. You said that your significant shift was knowing that you had a call in your life. And so that brings us to exactly who you are and why you are and why you have why we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so before we close out, I know you guys <laughs> wish we could go on oh, forever. We wish we so could. We usually do. She's amazing. But we so, can't yeah, record it yeah, all because yeah. sis just got, we keep our sister, yeah. we keep our sister bond private as well and we're sharing a bliss of it today. Deb, the last thing we want to do is for you to take the microphone and just if it's whatever you want to leave with our viewers and our listeners today, mm -hmm. that's your message. Why you can, all of it, and yes, keep your eyes out. I want you to go follow Deb, wherever she is. She'll tell us a bit how to connect with her. But just blast away and let us, tell us what you'd want us mm -hmm. to know and one thing you want us to remember after we listen to this yeah. episode. Yeah, that's a great question, and thank you for asking that. Um, and so, right, my, my whole being is why I can, my story, your breakthrough. Mm. And I think I would ask you, why are other people's lives better because you're in their lives? Mm. Why is it when you leave the table mm. that people are going to miss you, mm. that people are going to feel empowered? Mm. When you walk out of the room, we have two things that happen. Either people are going to be excited mm -hmm. or they're going to be, thank God they're leaving. Mm -hmm. And so why in your sphere of influence, why are people's lives better because you are in it? Woo! That just, I started doing the work right away. <laughs> <laughs> I start thinking about And my oh, life oh. is better because she yeah, is in it. And I'm like, because you're in it. And I'm like, so many reasons and that just gives us so much mm -hmm. hope Deb. Mm -hmm. so beautiful our viewers and listeners want to know how they can connect with you because they want to stay tucked in and tapped into this energy that you give they want some of what i got and i'm willing to share <laughs> how kind of me yes you're so thoughtful this is my sister my I'm sister thoughtful to share yes. her with you because you know when you have something good it's always best when it's shared mm -hmm. that's what i believe yeah. so tell us how we can connect well, first, it's a privilege to be part of Mindset Mastery 360, so you can find me with her there. We're right, always there. That, yeah. We're always there. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Deb Holt, and um, on my company is called Core Training. Core Training. Core Trainings with an S. And, and so people think, you know, core, oh, fitness. Yes, I love fitness. But my husband, five years of Latin, born on Valentine's Day, um, core is, the, is actually the word for heart. For so heart. all of our programming is designed from the heart. Right. Yes. So core trainings on Instagram, it's at core.trainings. And um, our website is, is core training. So you can find us there.com. <laughs> and also um, with my my lovely sister friend here as well and part of uh, yes. Mindset Mastery 360. So yes, and yes. that is we have got some amazing clients and amazing levels to climb. We've got amazing like seven, one step at a time. One step at a time, yeah. We're really taking it easy. We've got a good solid five-year plan. So 
check us out. Go to coretrainings.com and you'll be able to check, check her out on social media. You'll see the work that she's done. She'll give more details. And also, um, for those who are viewing, you're going to see a QR code. If you didn't find it, we're going to have it in the description of this episode. But Deb, you have been, you are, and you've been a phenomenal guest for us today. We've learned so much. I'm going to be listening to this a couple times. And don't forget the homework. What is the homework? They have to write why I can't. Why? What's right with what's you? What's right with you? Oh Start my God. with five. Just five. Start with five and keep adding. As you go along, little by little, you keep adding, but don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. Keep it. Then you laminate it, and then you put it right where your speedometer oh. is. <laughs> then if you get pulled over, it's not my fault. <laughs> I but love that. that vision when you open up. When, you know, it's that visual learning too, right? Yes. When you open up the cupboard. Oh, that's right. That's what's right with me. Yes. You know? Yes. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So thank it's you, Deb, for being here. My, my, my pleasure. My honor. I appreciate you. I love you dearly. And uh, mm. we are super blessed. Yes. And super we blessed. are over and out. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>